Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Several people who parked on a Lexington street woke up this morning to find their cars damaged. And Lexington police say a hit and run driver is responsible. It's you closer and closer to the weekend and it is pretty much the same old, same old. But I do have some changes by the end of your weekend. We'll run those down in a moment. One of the president's closest staff members, Attorney General Eric Holder, is set to step down from his role as the head of the Justice Department. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Another chilly morning turns into another beautiful afternoon. The sky cam outside the WKYT studios on Winchester Road shows lots of sunshine on this Thursday. Our highs have been above normal and the lows below normal. But will that continue for the weekend? Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here with the answer. Chris? I know a lot of folks out there, Jennifer, are just hoping that the answer is yes. So the answer up front is yes. As we head toward Friday and into your Thursday evening, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We have another great evening to go through. Look at those numbers from across the land. Upper 70s, partly to mostly sunny skies. Covington, Jackson, Richmond, and in Frankfurt. You're just seeing that live sky cam here in Lexington. Live First Alert Defender says, again, nothing to worry about across central and eastern Kentucky. We throw some clouds into the mix, and we're seeing at least a little bit of cloud cover trying to billow up into far southeastern Kentucky. But if you're out this evening, it's a mild one. Into the 70s through sundown, and not as steep of a drop once the sun sets. Only upper 50s and low 60s by late this evening. Focus of the forecast, though. I'm tracking some warm and a little bit of wet that shows up into that weekend forecast, Jennifer. The hour by hour outlook will show both of those when I come back here in just a bit. Lexington police say a driver hit seven cars in a neighborhood, leaving behind a lot of damage. All the vehicles were parked on Malibu Drive when they were hit around 5 this morning. Police cited a woman in connection to the hit and run crashes. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel talked to a neighbor in our top story at four. Police say a hit and run driver is responsible for damaging several cars along this stretch of road. No, no, never seen nothing like that before. It was scary. Karen Crane woke up around 5:30 this morning to a loud crash outside her Malibu Drive home. I heard a second loud noise, like a hit, but the second hit was metal grinding. Crane ran outside to see a silver charger driving into several cars along the street. I'm like, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? And is he going to stick around? To, you know, apparently. Not. By the time police got to the neighborhood, they found the woman responsible already inside of her home. Officers cited her with leaving the scene of an accident and driving without insurance. Although it's unclear what led up to this incident, Crane says it's not uncommon for hit and runs to happen along this busy stretch of road. All the time there's cars being hit right here. That witness also told us that one couple who lives in this area owns three of the cars that were hit. In Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. Lexington police have not released the driver's name. A Lexington father is in jail this afternoon accused of abusing his four-month-old daughter. Darnell Tagaloa is charged with criminal abuse. Lexington police say he intentionally shook his daughter because she was crying. Police say the baby suffered serious injuries and remains in the hospital. Tagaloa was arraigned in court today where he pleaded not guilty. We'll take you to the court hearing coming up on WKYT News at 5 and 6. We're working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick is at the live desk with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. School officials say they are overwhelmed by the generosity of their community after a fire destroyed a Central Kentucky preschool. The Lincoln County Board of Education will meet tonight. One of the items being discussed will be an update on the Lincoln County preschool. An August 6th fire destroyed eight preschool classrooms. The school district is waiting on mobile classrooms to be installed and set up. Coming up on WKYT News at 430, we'll tell you their target start date. A man arrested in a Lexington shooting now faces more legal troubles. Police say earlier this month, Brian Judson fired some shots into a neighbor's car on Wilson Downing Road. While he waits for that case to go to the grand jury, Judson is ordered to not have contact with the victims. Those neighbors called police yesterday when they say they saw Judson sitting in his driveway. They said he was staring at their house and implying he had a gun. He's now charged with intimidating a witness. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, you'll hear from one of his neighbors. 
And Jimmy John says some Kentucky customers could be at risk. The company is the latest to announce a breach of credit card data. The breach took place between June and September. More than 200 stores were affected. Included in the Lexington location in the Palomar Center, the store on Magnolia Drive in Georgetown, and the one on US 27 over in Somerset. Coming up on WKYT News at 6, we'll take a look at how this recent data breach affects you. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thank you, Sam. Now the story's making headlines across the nation at four. After six years on the job, Eric Holder is stepping down as attorney general. He's one of the few original members of President Obama's cabinet. Polo Sandoval has details. The White House confirms Attorney General Eric Holder plans to step down. The president is expected to make the official announcement fresh after his return to Washington Thursday afternoon. A Justice Department source tells CNN Holder has discussed his plans to step down with the president for some time. Those plans were finalized Labor Day weekend. Good afternoon. His nearly six-year tenure at the head of the Justice Department was marked by highs like civil rights enforcement. But he's also seen his share of controversy, including Operation Fast and Furious. That's the botched gun trafficking probe that put guns in the hands of Mexican drug cartels, leading to the death of a U.S. Border Patrol agent. Memos showed he was aware of the operation for close to a year, not a few weeks, as he stated he refused to step down. Mr. Attorney General, the blame must go to your desk, and you must today take the real responsibility. We cannot afford to allow the tragic mistakes of Operation Fast and Furious to become a political sideshow. Most recently, Holder traveled to Ferguson, Missouri, launching a federal probe into the death of Michael Brown. He's the unarmed teenager who was shot by a local police officer last month. Not just in Ferguson, but in many neighborhoods across this country. We can't allow these uh, tensions to go unresolved. Holder was perhaps one of President Obama's closest and most trusted members of his staff. He'll remain at his post until a successor is confirmed. In Washington, I'm Polo Sandoval. Now to stories making headlines around the world at four. Iraq's prime minister says Iraqi intelligence has uncovered a plot to attack subway systems in the United States and Paris. Haidar al-Abdi told reporters in New York that he isn't sure of the timing, but the plot has not been thwarted. He says he's been told the plot is the work of foreign fighters of the Islamic State group in Iraq. A senior Obama administration official says no one in the U.S. government is aware of any plot for an attack on subway systems. Activists say nearly 20 people have been killed as Syrian oil installations held by the Islamic State were pounded by U.S.-led airstrikes. It's a third day of the campaign against the extremists. The captured oil facilities are a main source of revenue for the militants. Yesterday, President Obama delivered a speech before the United Nations General Assembly, appealing for a unified front in the effort. A Lexington donut shop is moving. We'll tell you the main reason for the move ahead in WKYT Money Watch. New advice on how to avoid high health care costs. I'm Wendy Gillette in Yonkers, New York. I'll have the story coming up. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. The roller coaster ride continues on Wall Street this week with major losses today. The Dow plunged 264 points to close at 16,946. The Nasdaq lost 88 and the S&P 500 fell 32. A fixture in downtown Lexington is moving after seven years in the same location. Our partners at the Herald Leader report the Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street will close next Tuesday. It's set to reopen at Richmond Road at Mount Tabor next month. The operating partner tells the Herald Leader the new store will allow for a drive through which accounts for 50% of its business. Fewer borrowers are defaulting on their federal student loans. That's according to the U.S. Department of Education. 13.7% of students have defaulted on their federal loans within three years of their first payment. That's an improvement from 14.7 last year, but still very high. Borrowers go into default when they miss payments for 270 consecutive days. U.S. health care costs are some of the highest in the world, and even if you have insurance, you can still get stuck with some hefty bills. 
Consumer Reports is out with a new article that offers tips on how to avoid those high costs. Wendy Gillette reports. Jocelyn Crevet is healthy today, but five years ago she developed a rare disorder that forced her to have a heart transplant. The hospital accepted my insurance, and I assumed that that meant that everyone who worked in the hospital was, was, was in on that. But after the procedure, the bills piled up, and the 36-year-old found out even though the hospital took her insurance, the surgery team that did the transplant did not. Cravette and her husband were on the hook for more than seventy thousand dollars. I thought that we were going to lose our, we were going to lose everything. Cravette's story is documented in a new article from Consumer Reports. Health analyst Doris Peter says even insured Americans are having a hard time paying off medical bills. It's one of the major causes of debt of uh, bankruptcy in this country. Consumer Reports recommends a number of strategies to help you save money. First, pick the right insurance plan for you. You want to make sure you're getting the best deal for you, your needs. Next, make sure all doctors treating you are in your network and always find out how much a treatment is going to cost. That's not always an easy question to get an answer to, but you need to demand that. With the help of an advocacy group, Cravette was able to negotiate her bills down to just a few thousand dollars. She's happy it worked out, but is still frustrated it happened in the first place. Wendy Gillette for CBS News, Yonkers, New York. Consumer Reports says many health insurance companies now provide information on their websites so you can make sure a doctor is in the network and what procedures are covered under your plan. Thousands of kids in our area will benefit from a new program called Luggage of Love. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about. We'll tell you about it when we return here on WKYT. A lot of love for the weather out there today and really over the next couple of days. But a few changes begin to show up into central and eastern Kentucky by the end of that weekend. The hour by hour for a cast has the breakdown just ahead. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and First Alert Defender. Beautiful sky yet again this afternoon throughout central and eastern Kentucky. I want to show you this live sky cam. We're veering toward the north with our camera picture. Look at those little flat clouds that are scattered about the area. Those are called pancake cumulus clouds. You notice how they're not really lifting very high into the atmosphere. That's a sign you've got high pressure that is on top of the region, and that we do. Temperatures right now into the upper 70s to around 80 into much of central Kentucky. Mid and upper 70s here into the northern part of the state. 80 in Cynthiana. 77 West Liberty. Jackson checking in with a lot of mid and upper 70s. Close to 80. Barberville up into the London Corbin Somerset area. We've topped out right around 80, if not a couple of low 80s from Lake Cumberland back to the north into Adair and Casey counties. Live first alert defender. Hello and goodbye all at the same time. 24 hour planner. I told you this was going to be a repetitive forecast earlier this week. Around 80 tomorrow afternoon as we start out the day a little warmer than we were this morning with a lot of temperatures tomorrow morning into the low 50s. Maybe a little patchy fog from time to time, but overall for a Friday, can you ask for anything better than that? Tomorrow evening, high school football fans, we continue to look good as temperatures slowly drop into the upper 60s and low 70s during the second half of some of those games. High pressure that's across the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley is eventually going to loosen its grip on Kentucky. Not so much for the day tomorrow. Partly sunny skies, warm, high pressure. But we're watching the Gulf of Mexico as we get into the weekend. There's an area of low pressure developing here. And by early Saturday, there's a hint more of some clouds across central and eastern Kentucky. By Saturday afternoon, we're still dry in Kentucky, but watch that system lift its way onto the north as we go into Sunday. So clouds will increase, and by the end of the day, a couple of showers will be possible, especially for areas across southern and southeastern Kentucky. Weekend planner still looks good, right at 80 and a warm Saturday throughout the region. Upper 70s, chance for a late day shower or two, better chances the farther south that you live on Sunday. We'll see just how far north that system gets. Obviously, the farther north that it gets, better the chance for rain around here from late Sunday into Monday. Not as cold overnight. Watch out for some fog at 52 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast, upper 70s to around 80, very close to what we have out there this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine yet again. A little more cloud cover on Saturday and Wildcat fans as we pack Commonwealth Stadium. A little bit of sunscreen probably going to come in handy. 77, that chance for a shower on Sunday. Shower chance will hang tough into Monday. 
Look at the middle and end of next week. October arrives on Wednesday, upper 70s to near 80. It's going to be a windy period, and by this time next week, we're watching a strong cold front that is likely just off to our west that will uh, try to ruin next week, and we'll see how that one goes. Still a long time to get there, but overall, this is a pretty mild seven-day forecast. Let's get a check on traffic. Here's Officer Don. Newtown Pike near Sugar Maple. That's a report of a collision there that has uh, inbound Newtown Pike blocked one lane. Uh, but we're also seeing slowdowns on, on outbound Newtown Pike from the circle to the interstate at the moment. Uh, checking out Lee's Town Road through the construction. First look there uh, seemed to be okay. Versailles Road past Man of War. Just a slight delay turning from uh, Man of War onto Versailles. Now back to the studio. To become a WKYT Live driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the News tab, click on Traffic for more information. Well, children can be shuffled through the foster care system, but a new program hopes to make their move a little easier. Deanne Stevens is out and about today to tell us about Luggage of Love. Hey there, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. So excited to tell you about this new project. It is called Luggage of Love, hence the reason we have some great pieces of luggage here. Dana Gentry Jackson is with the Toy Chest, and you guys have put together this fabulous program, and one that I understand is much needed for our community. It is. We decided to partner with some local uh, foster care agencies. We were contacted by a case manager here locally and just um, someone, they, they shared their story with us of how there are local children that are in the foster care systems who are leaving their homes um, with their stuff in just garbage bags. I mean, they're packing, they're being asked to just throw their stuff in garbage bags and move on to the next place. And that just really touched our hearts. We felt like there is no reason that a child should be leaving and putting their stuff in a garbage bag. Um, we decided to partner uh, with the urgent care centers and some other folks and be able to give them actual luggage pieces that they can transfer their belongings in when they're going from place to place. So neat, and it's so easy for folks to participate. Yes, it is very easy. We are asking for gently used to preferably newer luggage. Um, it can be checked sizes, smaller carry-on sizes, or even larger duffel bags. Just anything that looks kind of kid-friendly and nice for these kids to be able to transfer their stuff in. Okay, so it's simple to do. All you got to bring is those gently used uh, pieces of luggage or brand new luggage and bring them here to urgent care either of Lexington or other locations. Jessica Collins is a nurse practitioner. Why did you guys decide to participate in this? Um, we see so many children in the foster care system, and this is something that's very close to our hearts here. Um, we have clinics in Lexington, Georgetown, Berea, and Frankfurt, and, um, and you can drop off the luggage there. All right, it is that simple to do. Be a part of Luggage of Love. There's also a website you can check out, and that is thetoychest.org. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. What a great idea. I was just saying, we have some extra luggage around yeah. the house, and I didn't know what to do with it. Now I know uh -huh. what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, it goes for a great cause right there. Absolutely. Well, Apple's new iPhones have some glitches. What Apple is doing to fix the problems. And why an anti-drunk driving ad is going viral. That's next in Better Living on WKYT News at 4. It's time for Better Living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Apple says it is working around the clock to fix a glitch in its new operating system. The tech giant made the rare move of pulling an update to iOS 8. They're trying to fix text messaging and health kit problems, but people who downloaded the new software on new iPhones couldn't make calls. Apple is also dealing with Bendgate. Some iPhone 6 Plus customers complain that the phone can bend. BlackBerry launches a new smartphone available at the end of the year. The Passport's square touchscreen measures four and a half inches diagonally. It also has a physical keyboard, something BlackBerry business users prefer. Seniors who notice their memory slipping may be seeing early signs of dementia. Researchers at the University of Kentucky studied more than 500 seniors for more than a decade. They found those who reported changes in their memory were almost three times more likely to develop memory and thinking problems down the road. 80% of those who developed dementia first complained of memory changes. What do women want in a husband? It turns out, a job. Nearly 8 in 10 women say that is the most important thing over having similar beliefs about children and religion, according to a new Pew Research study. 
However, it's not necessarily raining men out there. Only about 8 in 10 men between the ages of 25 to 34 work. The fight against drunk driving may have its cutest advocate yet. Cooper is the star of a new Budweiser ad promoting responsible drinking. Instead of driving drunk, the dog's owner stays at a friend's house and is greeted by a happy dog the next morning. The ad has gone viral with more than 13 million views. For more health, education, and consumer news, go to WKYT.com and click on Better Living. Now let's head over to Chris for another check of the weather. Now you got raining men stuck in my, song, or in my head now. Uh, Madison County, I-75, northbound from Richmond looking toward Lexington. And we have a partly sunny sky that is out there across central Kentucky. A few of those little high clouds are showing up. Clear, beautiful skies from our cam down at the National Weather Service in Jackson, in Breathitt County, into southeastern Kentucky. Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler radar, we call it First Alert Defender, and it has absolutely nothing that is showing up across the Bluegrass region, northern Kentucky, southern Kentucky, eastern parts of the state. Really, the entire region continues to see mainly sunshiny skies, but all good things must come to an end. We're tracking the potential for a little rain toward the end of that weekend forecast. That's just ahead. WKYT News at 430 starts right now.